Well, that gives us a pretty good, uh, gives us a good way to describe our overall displacement. Um, you might just say that that's the answer. The answer is that we're 7.8 meters to the right of where we started and 8.6 meters above where we started. However, what we usually like to do in physics with our final answer is refer to the overall vector, not to the components. So now we know the components of the overall vector. Um, the overall displacement vector here has a horizontal component of positive 7.8 and a vertical component of positive 8.6. This overall vector has a horizontal component of positive 7.8 and a vertical component of positive 8.6. That's a decent way to describe the overall vector, but we'd probably like to describe the overall vector directly. We'd like to know actually how long this overall vector is. So we need another skill. We need to know how to figure out the overall vector if you know the components. Well, that's one of the other skills that we've learned in this series of videos. We've learned how to find the overall vector if you know the components. So let's try to work that out. Uh, the board was getting kind of messy because we had a whole bunch of different vectors here. So I've tried to simplify things. I've erased the two individual vectors, and all I've got left is the overall vector that we're trying to figure out. All I've left here is the overall vector pointing from the initial point to the final point. Remember, this is the vector we're trying to figure out. We've already figured out that the overall vector has a horizontal component of positive 7.8 meters to the right, and a vertical component of positive 8.6 meters, which means up. And now we'd actually like to find the actual magnitude of the overall vector. Well, here's a case where we know two sides of a triangle and we have to find the third side. We've learned that if you know two sides, you don't need trig functions to find the third side. We don't need sine, cosine, or tangent. We just need the Pythagorean theorem, which says that the hypotenuse squared equals one leg squared plus another leg squared. Now, the hypotenuse here is what we don't know. One of the legs is 7.8, and the other leg is 8.6. Now we're back in the world of geometry, where all we care about is lengths and magnitudes. So I'm not going to be indicating the signs on these numbers. Well, we can uh, do one step on our calculator to find 7.8 squared plus 8.6 squared. Comes out to be 134.8. Remember, though, this is not the hypotenuse. It's the hypotenuse squared. A common mistake is that people forget that so far they've only found the hypotenuse squared. How can we get the hypotenuse term by itself? We have to remove the square function by doing the opposite. That means taking the square root. And if we take the square root of the left-hand side, algebra says we have to take the square root of the right-hand side. We're taking positive square roots because we want lengths, which are positive. Well, if you square something and then you take the square root, you just undo the square and you go back to the original variable, which is just the length of the hypotenuse. Now we need our calculator again to find the square root of 134.8. That's 11.6 uh, approximately. As usual, we're not going to be worrying about significant figures here. As usual, we're not going to be worrying about significant figures here. So the length of our hypotenuse is 11.6. This is the overall vector, so there's no need to determine a sign. Overall vectors don't have signs. Well, now we've figured out what our displacement is from our original position. Um, we know that overall, we've gone 11.6 meters from where we started. Our final position is 11.6 meters from where we've started. We found the magnitude of the overall displacement, 11.6 meters from where we started. Notice that you can't just take the two individual magnitudes and add them. Uh, one of the individual uh, paths was 7 meters long, and then the next journey was, uh, s the first leg of our journey was 5 meters long, and then the second leg was 7 meters long. 
Uh, but 5 plus 7 is 12, not 11.6. Since those two vectors were not parallel, we can't just add those numbers together. However, we broke them into components, and we could add the components together. And then once you know the components, you can use a little bit more trigonometry to go back to the overall vector, which is what we really care about. So notice our trick here. What we really care about is the length of the overall vector. Uh, but we can't find that directly because we can't add the individual overall vectors directly. So instead, we broke each vector into its horizontal and vertical components. It's very easy to add two horizontal components or two vertical components. And that gave us the horizontal and vertical components of the overall vector. And then we could use a little bit more trigonometry to go back from the components of the overall vector uh, to the magnitude of the overall vector itself. We figured out now that uh, our final position is 11.6 meters, 11.6 meters from the initial position. Now, in a sense, though, we haven't quite finished the problem. We haven't really found our overall resultant displacement. All we found is the magnitude of the displacement. We've just found the length of this arrow here. We know that we're 11.6 meters from where we started, um, but we haven't figured out the direction that we're in. Remember that our initial path was making an angle of 30 degrees, and um, our subsequent path was making an angle of 60 degrees. I've erased those two paths just to make uh, the picture a little bit simpler. But first we were going 30 degrees, and then we were going 60 degrees. Maybe I'll label that a little bit here. First we went 30 degrees for 5 meters. And then we switched to a path uh, that was 7 meters long at an angle of 60 degrees. Uh, and we went first 5 meters and then 7 meters. We ended up at this final point here that was 11.6 meters from where we started. Uh, but what we haven't figured out is this angle. We haven't figured out what direction um, our overall displacement is from the initial position. You can see from looking at it that it's certainly going to be bigger than 30 degrees. We're not going to be just in a direction that's 30 degrees uh, above the horizontal anymore. Um, maybe you can see that it's probably going to be between 30 and 60. It's not really obvious how we can just combine this 30 number and the 60 number to find this angle here. There isn't really any way to directly combine the 30 and the 60, just like there's no way to directly combine the 5 and the 7. So I, I wanted to go back for a second and draw the two individual vectors that we're adding up here, the 5 meters and the 7 meters, but I think I'm going to erase them again now so they don't confuse us when we think about the overall vector. So again, we've decided that the magnitude of the overall displacement after our entire journey was 11.6 meters, but we still have to discuss what the direction of that overall displacement is. Well, how do we indicate the direction of an overall vector? Uh, I hope you're comfortable now with the idea that the way you indicate the direction of an overall vector is by specifying an angle that is formed by that overall vector. We've previously discussed the way you indicate the direction of an overall vector is to specify an angle that is formed by that vector. If we could figure out how big this angle is, that would be a good way of specifying the direction of our new displacement vector. Well, I hope you don't find that too challenging at this point. Now that we know the components of the overall vector, we really should know how to figure out this angle. If you haven't already done so, maybe you should pause the video and now figure out this angle if you haven't done so already. I'm going to put asterisks here to indicate that what we're trying to figure out is we're trying to use these two components to figure out this angle. We're, pro um, we're probably not going to use the hypotenuse, because remember the hypotenuse was not one of our original numbers. Uh, what we had first was these two components, so it would be more conventional to figure out the angle using the components. It would be possible now to use the magnitude of the overall vector, the hypotenuse, but that's not the way this is usually done. Usually people use the components here. Uh, let's label that this is the, I'll put an asterisk here to show this is the angle we're focusing on. So this is the adjacent side for the overall vector, and this is the opposite side. So which trick function do we need? Well, we want to use these two components to figure out this angle. 
Um, so we need a trig function that refers to the adjacent and the opposite sides. We need a trig function that refers to the adjacent and the opposite sides. Well, to, uh, the tangent refers to the opposite and the adjacent sides. So let's use the tangent function. The tangent of the angle should be the opposite side over the adjacent side. 